You're listening to the worst show on the Potosphere. Dynasty Slack Gets My Goat. You know, one other thing I wanted to talk about while we're complaining, and this is something that I notice fairly often, but I'm trying to think why I wanted to talk about it recently. Maybe it was because when we went to that convention, and you go into the public bathroom, right? In the public bathroom, there's all sorts of wonders and amazement in there. You don't have to do anything anymore. Are, wait, are you talking about glory holes? Or? No, no, not even that. I mean, these days, you don't have to flush the toilet yourself. There's a laser, a radar, there's a freaking magic box that sees when you walk away and flushes the toilet for you. And you don't have to turn on the water in the faucet anymore. You wave your hand underneath and there's a thing that sees and sprays water out for you. And you don't have to push a button or roll a wheel or turn a crank or anything to get the paper towel out. You just wave your hand underneath it and the towel comes out. And it seems really wondrous and wonderful, kind of. Except that it only works 50% of the time. The flushers are actually pretty, pretty good. Although, I don't know if you've ever used the ones where you have to sit down on, and you stand up and it flushes, and you're like, wait, but I haven't, I haven't even wiped yet. How am I going to get it to flush then? What? And then you walk away and it just stays there, because it doesn't <laughs> flush. Because it already flushed. Or... You go to wipe, put your hands under the water, and you're just sitting there like you're casting a spell or something, because you're waving your hands all over the place, and the stupid water is not coming out. And the soap things are the same deal, where you, like, hold your hand under, and you're like, eh, 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 waving your hand around, just trying to get soap out. And the paper towel thing, you wave your hand under, and you get, like, a tiny ribbon of paper towel that's not nearly enough to even come close to drying one finger, but it shuts off. Like, it won't give you more towels until you wait, like, ten seconds so that it's like, oh, now it's a new person. That other guy had to have walked away by now, and now I can give another paper. Because only one towel per person, so yeah. they don't waste them. That other guy walked away disgusted and wet-handed. <laughs> now it's a new person. Yeah, and this it's been this way forever, though. Public bathrooms are the, the... I'm sure that there's other things that are like this, but public bathrooms are the most notorious. Before they had the wave your hands under the faucet to get the faucet to turn on, they had the other faucets where you push down on the button thingy. Instead of having the handle where you just turn it on the water, you wash your hands, and then you turn it off when you're done. You had to push on the button, and it would spray water for a predetermined period of time, which is always a very short period of time. So you have enough time to get your hands wet, and then it turns off. And so then you get some soap on your hands, and then you have to push the button again with soapy hands so that you can rinse them off. And then those things are always breaking, too. So you push the button, and then it just turns on, and it doesn't turn off, and it just stays on. I don't know. It's... It upsets me because it's the kind of crap that you have to go through on a daily basis, all because people are trying to thwart assholes. The whole reason that they've even invented these things is because there's assholes that go into the bathroom, turn on the water, and then walk out and go, ha, 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 that's so funny that I left the water on. I'm so cool. Or they'll take a hundred paper towels and throw them all over the floor. Or they'll piss in the toilet and then just leave it for the next guy to smell. <laughs> or whatever the heck it is that they think they're doing. All this crap that's invented just to thwart these jerks. These a-holes. It's frustrating for those of us who aren't a hole inclined. See, I'm reminded of in my childhood... In elementary school, Mr. Horton, who lived like two houses down. I had a donut shop. Uh, he, no, he, but he did occasionally hear a who. He was our custodian, you know. Mm -hmm. And he, at one time I went in the boys' bathroom, and he was in there, and he just made this disgusted sound. And I looked over at him, and he looked at me, and he said, 
do you know who did it? And I said, what? And he says, somebody shit in the urinal again. <laughs> and I walked over, oh. and there was this big log in the urinal. The urinal is a flat thing on a wall. It's like a, a vertical sink. There's no way to squat on it or sit on it. It's only to pee in, standing up. And someone magically had laid a big deuce in there just so Mr. Horton would have to turn it up to clean That's it up. That's what I'm talking and, about. Uh, here it is 25 years later or more. And I still think about that from time to time. Mr. Horton saying somebody shit in the urinal again. Which, again, you're, you're not supposed to say to a little kid. But, <laughs> but if you're that um, pissed off, you would. But I just thought, how did somebody do this? I mean, the amount of effort it would take to plant your flag, so to speak, in this <laughs> in this urinal, you had to have known that this is a bad thing that I'm doing and it's worth getting my back wet yeah, or that's whatever it is to play this cruel prank. Getting on other people's the pee on your butt cheeks because you have to squash them up against the thing to get in there. It's messed up stuff. You know, at where I work, there's the urinal. And one time, not too long ago, Somebody threw a piece of gum. They spit their gum into the urinal. Okay. It sat there for a while, and then somebody wrote a note on the wall. Somebody put a note on the wall and said, Hey, please do not spit your gum in the urinal. The garbage can is right behind you. Somebody is going to have to fish the gum out of the urinal. Because it doesn't go down the drain? This is gum. Why would you spit your gum in the urinal? It's so cruel, that kind of crap. The worst part is somebody's out there right now inventing a shield to put on the urinal to keep people from spitting gum and taking craps in the urinal. Yes, but when you pee against this shield, if you pee at it at just the right angle, your pee will be deflected back upon you and your pants. Exactly. And you're going to go, ah! And it's just because this thing was invented to thwart the a-hole, right? Exactly. You thwart the a-holes and it always screws over the people that aren't a-holes, that would considerately only pee in a urinal, that would put their gum in the garbage can and take their craps in the toilet where they belong. It's like you go to the paper towel machine and somebody has put their gum over the invisible eye and so you can't get the paper towels out of the machine to clean up the deuce that someone has laid in the urinal. Exactly. It's just, it's it's so frustrating. And just imagine the kind of real inventions that these brilliant people that came up with these things that make the faucets turn on by themselves. We would have our flying cars and our <laughs> hoverboards in 2015 if the poor inventors weren't wasting their time trying to thwart the a-holes that are, you know, leaving the faucet on. I don't know, man. The, the things that we have lost, <laughs> the things that we're all doing without, even the a-holes would be happy because we'd be freaking teleporting to Mars by now if only our brightest minds weren't wasted on that kind of stuff. Is there another thing that you can think of other than the public bathrooms? Because I know that there's more than that. I mean, this is the same thing, but... When I lived at the dorms at UCLA, in the the boys, in, sorry, boys, in the men's restroom, somebody had put these signs on the mirrors over the sinks that said, please do not urinate in the sinks. Thanks, or, you know, whatever. And it was signed, you know, the, the UCLA dorms. And it just shocked me to see this. It was like, wait a second. This is such a problem that you guys have to put these notes up. <laughs> Really? I, I, who would, you're, I mean, why, why would anybody pee in the sink? I mean, I can't even be loud enough. It would just completely redline that question. And so I thought it would be funny to make signs. And, and so I started putting up signs and I said, please do not take a shit on the floor. Signed the UCLA management. And I came in and, you know, it's just, um, you know, please, please do. do not wash your hands in the urinal. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, please do not leave a dead body in the supply closet and stuff. UCLA thing. I did it like three different times. And I thought I was just so, so funny. Because I, you know, I I had my computer and I had a little printer and I was able to make these little 
signs that looked as official as theirs. <laughs> and I just, oh, I thought I was so clever. I, although I still laugh at please do not take a dump on the floor. But yeah, just the, that that was such a problem that they had to address it kind of feels like that too. Yeah, know? it's the same kind of thing. I was thinking of like if you go to places where there's a staircase outdoors and they have a handrail. Used to be that there was a handrail and you could grab the handrail and as you walk down the stairs, you could just drag your hand along the handrail, you know, to help steady yourself as you walk down the stairs. Nowadays, you can't do that. You have to lift your hand up at intervals going down the stairs because there's big notches, metal notches that are there. In places where they've glued broken bottles on there to keep people yeah. from... To keep people from skateboarding on the rails because putting up a sign and saying, hey, please don't skateboard here isn't enough. People will do it anyways. They don't care. And all of those people that have had to design special skate parks to try and lure the kids away from skating all over the rails at the wherever there are rails. That's another thing that I can think of that they had to add and, you know, that's not as big of a deal, although I have a time or two dragged my hand along one of those rails, not realizing that it was spiked and whacked my fingers on the, the notch and been like, ah, oh, damn it! I hate those assholes that made this possible. Yeah, um, there's a an amusement park about two hours from here that I would go to every summer, you know, as a kid, because we didn't have a Disneyland or anything like that, and... There's this big, it's a really lame ride now, but when I was a kid, there was Count Dracula's Castle, and I thought that it was neat. And they had this big facade, probably just made out of cement, but who cares, where they had done like all these intricate carvings of like snakes and spiders and bats and Medusa and, you know, stuff. And I know none of that except for the bats has to do with Dracula, but it was supposed to look like, you know, it was some ancient tomb or something like that we were going to go into and... And if you went at the beginning of the season, when the amusement park first opened, you'd be able to, like, admire all of these carvings and stuff. But if you went in, like, July or August or whatever, it would be completely covered with gum. <laughs> Kids would take their gum and they would just stick it. You know, I'm going to stick it on Medusa's eyes. You know, you know, the things with eyes would be the first one. But, yeah, if you go by, like, the end of the season, here it is 30 years later. If you go at the end of the season, it's covered in multicolored gum. And I I don't know why that's a tradition. I mean, but it does seem to be something that's passed on from generation to generation. It's like when you go to Dracula's castle tonight, son, here's some gum to put on Medusa's tit. And that's one of those things. It's not exactly what you're talking about, but it's somebody's job at the end of yeah. Sept uh, August or whatever to chisel off all that gum, or, or or maybe they get to eat it. I don't know. Give those guys a break. <laughs> They're probably not paid a lot. But it's just S not fair. Somebody's inventing a gum shield. And that's that's another thing, man. Sticking your gum somewhere like that is just awful. It's like throwing it in the urinal. I mean, it's, it's as bad. It's just as bad. I mean, it's not as bad because at least you don't have to put your hands in the pee. Uh, to get this gum off of, like, the Medusa statue. But somebody's got to sit there and chisel that crap off. And gum that gets stuck under the table at the fast food place oh, or yeah, whatever. Yeah. And then you're sitting there and you're like, oh, what is that I'm touching? And then you, ah, you realize what you've got. Somebody's chewed up gum. It's just too bad that people want to be uncool. And some people just do it just for the hell of it. It's like I actually saw a, uh, a post on Facebook the other day, and it was all about ways to annoy people on Facebook, ways to, to be weird on, and, and uncomfortable on Facebook. And it was like, you know, go to somebody's Facebook page and then look up like really, really old pictures of them and then comment on these pictures which is weird because that happened to us. Yes, it did. Just... Out of the blue this week, a picture from like two years ago has become all the rage. There's like 10, 15 new comments on it, 40 people liking it. <laughs> They're all talking about it as though it happened this week. <laughs> but it's from 2012 or something. I don't, it's weird. 
I keep getting more note of, hey, somebody liked your picture. And I'm like, what? Why did they like this picture? <laughs> Stop with this picture. It's three years old. But who cares? Give me another example of something that I can actually get behind of it. Just liking uh, an old picture. Why is just, that bad? It's just to weird people out because that way they know that you've been creeping on their old pictures you know what i mean that's like the, that's the thing you do you like you get a new friend and then you go and you go and look at all their old pictures and you check them out and, and then you make you know but the 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 more uncomfortable is that you're commenting on this picture now you're saying hey that looks like fun or just some some really cheesy comment kind of a thing another thing that they said to do was like to get to ask to be friends of like your friend's grandma or something <laughs> like that and try <laughs> because grandma doesn't know she'll just be friends with whoever asks and then all of a sudden you're you're doing stuff with this person's grandma on facebook just to be i can't remember what else there was but there was a lot of them and they were really some of them were like borderline you might get yourself on a watch list if you did this stuff i can't even remember what they were but no, now I need to know. <laughs> Tell me again, though, what you call it when you look through some, all of somebody's pictures? You're creeping. Hmm. You creep on their pictures. See, because, yeah, there's only one reason I look for somebody's old pictures. You certainly don't comment. <laughs> it's like, oh, this is a good lad. Yeah. Hey, me, he looks sexy there. Me, me likes what me sees. Do you have any more fifth grade pictures? Oh, boy. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, then the funny thing was the person who wrote this article was a female, and a female can get away with some of the stuff that she suggested that you do, whereas a male cannot. Mm. <laughs> a male would immediately get the cops called on them. It's an interesting thing to, to annoy people just to annoy them, just to see the look on their face. I remember seeing a YouTube video where people would go up to random black guys on the street and then say a racist joke to them to see if they could get them to punch them in the face. Not to punch the other guy. They they wanted to get punched in the face. And they would do something to get themselves punched in the face. See, I don't get that. I mean, in, face, in Facebook, in Fight Club... That happens. One of the assignments that week is to get in a fight with a total stranger and lose. And so all of them pick fights and then just get punched or whatever. But, dude, that's dangerous, this whole... Race relations are not in a perfect place right now. It just seems like you could yeah, end up wishing you hadn't made that little joke. But there's no reward or any... I mean, I don't understand. Why? Why are they going up... And saying the racist jokes too. I did not understand it myself. I have to admit, I don't know why. But they're they're pranksters. They're YouTube pranksters, which you know some YouTube pranksters I think are funny when their pranks are you know when they made that demon baby that drove <laughs> around in the baby carriage and then they had like a remote control they could make it pop up and bah! and people would go ah and they'd scream. And I saw one just the other day. Is there a movie coming out called Ouija? No, but there was last year. Oh, okay, last year. So this is an old one. So I just saw it the other day, though, where this girl, it was one of those people that can make their eyes bug out just on command. And they set up this booth. Free Ouija board fortunes, red here. Come in and get it for free just today. And people would come in, and then she'd have them sit down, and she'd be like, okay. And then she'd... She'd start doing the thing, and she'd just go, R, U, N, run! And she'd make her eyes bulge out, and she'd just start screaming. And then they had a hole dug in the floor where, like, this demon person would come <laughs> bursting out of the ground. And all these people that just came in for their free fortune would be like, ah, oh my God, ah, and they'd get up and run out of the place. <laughs> And that kind of stuff is funny, you know, you're not hurting anybody, and you know, you know that the people that are having to happen to them are afterwards going, oh my gosh, that was so great, that was so funny. But yeah, just going up to be mean to someone and get punched in the face, how is that funny? 
And I'm sure there's people, maybe even people listening, going, you guys are idiots. You don't know anything. Of course it's funny. It's awesome. It's the best thing ever. But I can't agree with that. There's nothing cool or fun about that. And somebody's inventing a YouTube filter to block that kind of stuff right now. Yeah, somebody's inventing a Facebook filter to keep to prevent creeping. That's right. <laughs> yeah, no no creeping in the urinals, folks. <laughs> and those people if they weren't wasting their time inventing these things, cancer um, would be gone. Yes, curing cancer. The Martian colony already set up. Yeah. All that stuff would be taken care of. Yeah, I'm listening to uh Kim Stanley Robinson's uh Brown Mars. No. I'm listening to Red Mars right now, which is the first book of the three. And, yeah, the Martian colony gets set up in, like, I want to say it was 2025. And this is after the first, you know, voyage to Mars already has happened. Which must have taken place at least, you know, I would say at least five years earlier. Probably more like ten but in 1990, I don't know exactly when it came out, but I want to say like 91, 92 when that book came out. You would expect 20 years from now you'd probably have had a voyage to Mars, right? I don't know. I wouldn't expect that anymore, though. I don't know that we'll ever go to Mars. It's not like it used to be where President Kennedy says, Let's go to the moon because we can! And even though the president, when the moon voyages actually happen, is from a different party, he's still stuck with it. You know, that doesn't happen anymore. As soon as one president's out, the other one's in. And he's like, all right, all the things that that guy did, let's undo them all. Now I will do this so that the next guy can undo it all when he comes in. Let's spin our wheels. That's <laughs> what government's really about. Well, we need uh, to invent something to fix the mess the a-holes have made. Yeah, seriously. We need to invent a new government. Oh, um, I can't say that, can I? Why? I'm on Why? a watch Why? list right now just because I mentioned that out loud. It's not 1953. I think you can say that if you'd like. But, <laughs> but I'm on a watch list. They're expecting me to blow something up. Now, you know, even... Uh, Homeland Security guy couldn't be arsed to listen to one of our podcasts. Yeah, that's probably true. The only way they'll hear about it is if somebody gives them an anonymous tip. And no one would do that. Oh, uh, that went one more thing. Oh, okay. If you don't mind talking a tiny bit about your job, you said something that I found fascinating. And you don't often do that. So, wow. You said that your station does not cover bomb scares. If there's somebody calls in a bomb threat, your station has made a line in the sand that we will not cover this because that's exactly what the a-hole wants. Would you talk about that for a minute? Yeah, that, that is the case. That's actually not even just my station. That used to be a industry-wide thing that they don't cover bomb scares because that's what people who do bomb scares are after is attention. They love to phone in the bomb threat and then they sit there and watch as all the kids get taken out to buses and bust somewhere safe and then the people go through the school looking for this imaginary bomb that doesn't exist. Back when people cared about news and watched the news, they wouldn't cover bomb scares because that would give that person the attention that they needed. Now that, you know, news viewership is getting older and older and dying off at an alarming rate, stations have started covering bomb scares here and there. And on days when they're desperate for something, they'll be like, oh, but it's a big deal because the parents need to know about, you know, and they'll try and come up with some kind of justification for why they're covering this. Oh, see, I thought it was kind of your station's mandate and I, I felt a little bit of respect for your station for that because I, that's one of those things where it's like we've made a decision and it, one day that's going to backfire but we've had to make this decision because of assholes or is that different it's no it's true yeah that's why they made the decision and it's a decision and it's the unfortunate thing is that it's eroding away 
And I think it comes from all the school shootings and those kind of things that have become such big news that now when something happens with the school, they're like, oh, but it's children. Think of the children. We've got to cover it. You know, and it's... But it's, didn't you tell me that at some point somebody's going to make the decision... I'm sorry, we, we don't cover school shootings on this channel for the exact same reason. These people want to be famous. They want to be immortal. They want people to know their name and what they they did, and we're not going to do that. Um, yeah, it, it needs to be done, truthfully. That's what somebody... Uh, I saw a blog post by somebody that was saying exactly that, that that's what people needed to do after one of the most recent shootings like that where they're just like this these people are out for that they want the attention their attention whores or whatever the uh right word is for that and we need to stop giving it to them because we're giving them exactly what they want um and yeah that is like the ultimate i mean we've talked about a-holes just doing stupid things like leaving the faucet on or whatever and now they've invented a way to keep you from wasting that water but yeah all the billions and billions of dollars going in to try and stop the a-holes that will go somewhere and blow things up or shoot people to try and prove their point or to try and get their attention, which I bet half of it is. Even terrorists, they just want attention more than anything else, and that's how they get it, by blowing things up. All the things that have had to be done try and combat that at my old station or maybe i can't remember maybe it was here or maybe it was there i can't remember but we had we had a new manager come in and he was blown away the first time he saw a story on our air about gang violence because he had come from houston in his Houston station, you know, gang violence got to be such a problem that they, they made the same thing. It was like, if, there, if there's a gang-related crime, we're not covering it. Because we don't want these people to get the attention that they're after with their... We don't want people to know about gangs, to be interested in gangs or anything like that. And so they wouldn't cover gang violence the same way that we wouldn't cover bomb scares. But it was such a minimal problem in sacramento that you'd still right i think it was much less of a deal although sacramento it may have been here that we would cover the gang stuff and in sacramento they also didn't cover it oh okay i think here uh, was where that was and i think it's just because there's not that it's such a minimal problem but because there's less news and so you know if it bleeds it leads that how that goes but yeah, that's just, that's one of those things. The a-holes often rule, and all the rest of us are reacting to it. They do the things, and we run around to deal with it. It's unfortunate. If it weren't for that, all the progress that could have been made. Talk about the Martian colony. If we weren't fighting a war on terror... We could be podcasting from Mars right now. Seriously. It's insane, uh, effort that's had to go into that and the lives that have been lost and so on and so on and so on the average third grader in america could read <laughs> i mean not that they would have pumped all those trillions into education but it could have gone somewhere right all right so have we come to the end of the show i think we've come to the end of two shows but yeah that's that's <laughs> fine yeah i suppose that's true well this was a, a nice little bitch session that we had here, and that gets my goat going back to the roots of the show. I'm sure we'll be back with some movie talk, maybe some comic book talk, maybe some comic book movie talk. Can we talk about how hard it is to write? Sometime? Yeah, maybe we'll talk about some writing talk. Here we haven't soon. done an episode like that in minutes. Yeah. We'll be back with some of that next time, probably. Thanks for listening, everybody. I'm Big Anklevich. And I'm Rich Outfield. And don't let the a-holes get you down. That's right. Don't be a guy. Be a man. Oh, I like that. <laughs> and don't crap in the urinal, man. <laughs> that Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons attribution, no derivatives license. That means you can copy it, share it, and make paper dolls out of it. But you can't sell it or use it in your little voodoo rituals. I'm talking to you, sir.